Today we're going to look at some predictions that may come true this year. Sort of like this plague of potentially biblical proportions in this modern day exodus to Europe. Before we get to those though, let's begin by talking about something that I'm pretty sure quite a number of you would actually love to hear, including me. Shortening of work weeks. Oh god, please let this happen. Here's a bit of an optimistic prediction for us. According to W.L. George, an English author who lived in the years 1882 to 1926, Americans would likely start to work less. Don't believe us? Heck, I don't believe me either. Well, here are his words verbatim. Americans will be less enterprising and much more pleasure-loving. They will have rebelled against long hours. The chances are that in 2022, few people will work more than seven hours a day, if as much. The effect of this, which I'm sure sounds regrettable to many of my readers, will, in my opinion, be good. Sure, it sounds like a beautiful thing if it would ever happen, am I right? Well, but I bet some of you think that this would go on to be a pipe dream. Don't give up hope just yet, though, buddy. California legislators are considering shortening the work week from 40 hours to 32. That's an entire day that could be added to the weekend. This would give us all plenty of time to get some chores done, some more voice acting done in my occasion, and just relax. But there is a caveat to that California bill. This law they're thinking of passing down would only affect those who work in companies with over 500 workers. So if you're in a small business, sorry guys, ain't your time in the sun just yet. Same time though, this could also have some negative effects. A lot of people depend on that extra eight hours for money because either we're in a lot of debt or our apartments are horribly overcharged because apartments suck. Most people probably would just end up working that extra day just for the overtime pay. So in all actuality, it probably wouldn't change too much. Energy supply. Another one from our writer visionary George this time talked about energy. Listen carefully to his words and tell us how spot on you think he actually was. Coal will not be exhausted, but our reserves will be seriously depleted, and so will those of oil. One of the world dangers a century hence will be a shortage of fuel, but it is likely that by that time a great deal of power will be obtained from tides, from the sun, probably from radium and other forms of radial energy. While it may also be that atomic energy will be harnessed. Kinda sounds like George had a cheat sheet in the future, huh? Cause honestly, he's mostly right. What we're looking at right now in 22, according to global commodities trading firm Trafigura, coal prices will likely remain high in the near term due to an estimated 3-5% shortage in supply. Heck, as we speak, India is facing numerous power cuts because of said shortage. Isn't that eerily accurate? But let's not focus too much on the negatives. He did, after all, point out the ways people have come to harness energy in the form of solar energy and hydropower. These, unlike coal, are renewable sources of energy, meaning we shouldn't have shortage problems if enough resources are coughed up. If we look at statistics now, many countries do have solar energy installed to supplement or provide an alternative to their current energy resource, with the leading nation actually being China. Even if we broaden our scope to even privately owned places, some homeowners have solar panels installed on their rooftops to save up on those electricity bills. Yeah, I'm gonna say this, George had some good ideas about the future. Locust Plague. You guys remember Baba Vanga? In case you haven't, she was a Bulgarian mystic who was said to have predicted the 9-11 attack. Not only that, but she correctly stated that the 44th American president would be African American. You lost count on who that could be, it's Barack Obama. Well, despite the fact that she's now dead, she still has a lot of predictions that encompass as far as the 5000s AD. Baba Vanga predicted biblical scenes to happen in India. No, we don't mean the second coming of Jesus, rather than a second Christmas as well. She foresaw a more sinister version, a locust plague. According to her, India's temperatures would reach a whopping 50 degrees Celsius, after which locusts would come and attack crops and agricultural plots, causing a massive famine to ravage the country. While we really hope it doesn't happen, because there have been times when Baba Vanga hasn't been correct, it doesn't sound too far off. This isn't because of some fanaticism either. In 2019 to 2020, India indeed faced some locust attacks primarily in the districts of Rajasthan and Gujarat. According to news articles, a total area of 179,584 hectares were affected in Rajasthan, while an observed crop loss of 19,313 hectares was observed in Gujarat. If it sounds like it's a problem recently passed, think again. 2021, locust incursions were reported in even more regions across India to the point that state governments coordinated operations for locust control. That's not bad enough, no government relief has been reported to have been provided to the farmers affected by the pestilence. There's hope that India has a kinder 2022, with the insect problem resolved sooner rather than later. World Hunger 
This man is probably the one most people know of the peoples from this list. He is, after all, probably the most talked about guy when it comes to predictions. Nostradamus, or Nostradamus, a French astrologer who lived in the 1500s, once predicted global hunger due to rising prices and a failing economy. Ooh, that one hurts right there for me. His words were as such, no abbots, monks, no novices to learn. Honey shall cost far more than candle wax. So high the price of wheat that man is stirred, his fellow man to eat in his despair. Yeah, that sounds like an excerpt from Left for Dead or Back for Blood or something like that. But is Nostradamus that far off? Not really. Let's face it, prices have been a pain in the butt ever since the pandemic. We're in a terrible inflation over in America, and I can't say much about other countries at this point. Cost of a cart full of food a few years back is probably just half or a third of a cart now. While this doesn't spell world hunger necessarily, think about the people who may be in a less fortunate situation. If food was a struggle back then, it's even more so now. I haven't even included the people who need help to get sustenance yet, like some folks in Madagascar and Africa, and other countries where malnutrition is widespread. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we're going to be seeing someone holding up a human leg as a snack real soon. If we were, I'd be digging a basement rather than talking about this right now and also prepping more guns. However, it is alarming how the world situation could spiral already existing problems. We don't somehow don't act fast and figure out potential ways to alleviate these problems, it won't be long until global hunger actually does happen. War. Ah, uh, yeah, the thing that keeps happening at this point. Every time something bad happens, we all just think World War III is right around the corner, and I wouldn't be surprised at this point. The Prophet of Doom, that is Nostradamus, said that within the next several years, a great war will break out. Now, whether this is the one wherein he predicted that France would face danger in the East, or is an entirely separate prediction altogether, I don't know. One thing is for sure, though, it's terrifying, nerve-wracking, and tear-jerking. No, I'm not trying to overreact here. The fact is this, there's wars going on right now. Some of you may prefer to call it a crisis, but whatever your word to describe what is happening is, the truth is people are dying in our year right now. I'm sure you guys know exactly what situation I'm alluding to. Whether this does escalate to an honest-to-god world war, or just a simple great European war, or just fizzles out with no actual real climax, I don't know, but I sure hope not. Just look at the paths and trails of sorrow that's already been carved. Where cities used to stand, ashes began to take over. It's not really about whether we need or want this to happen, it simply is. It's also not just that one either. Sometimes we forget to point out that something is happening in the Middle East as well. You know what? News say that this seven-year-old civil war has been growing even more violent since the start of 2022. It's literally one of the worst humanitarian crises going on in the world. <sighs> hopefully, and hopefully, this gets resolved soon. And whatever Nostradamus thought could happen not come to pass, or if it has happened or is happening, that it ends these conflicts. God, this is a depressing video, isn't it? Immigration intensifies. This prediction speaker is unclear. Some sources say it's another from Baba Vanga, while others say to Nostradamus instead wrote the words. Whoever said it though, the forecast is that seven times as many immigrants will arrive in Europe this year. Oh boy, why doesn't that sound insane? Aside from the entry above, what are some reasons people would immigrate though? Some countries just don't have the same opportunities as first world countries. Someone could be busting their back working several jobs to survive in their nation, whereas another could be doing the same amount of work elsewhere but having a more comfortable life. In the same breath, someone may immigrate to further their career path. Also again, the situation over in the one place, you know, causing people to seek refuge elsewhere because their home got bombed. I know personally my country doesn't necessarily fund inventors and scientists as much as other places, but what are these brilliant minds supposed to do? Stay and keep trying to get the attention their developments deserve or travel somewhere they get due consideration? We can also consider environmental causes that can also make people choose to migrate. Sure, maybe their country is free from more political problems, perhaps they make a decent enough living and have a career they love, but the tsunamis and earthquakes or volcanic activity abound. Yeah, if I were in their shoes, you bet I'd think about going somewhere safer, too. That's not to say countries with problems like these are ill-prepared or dangerous. Just look at Japan and its advanced architecture. But it does boil down to personal preference. Some people would rather just ensure their safety. Lastly, the social aspect. Everything could be fine, but everyone you love moved abroad. Well, that's about enough reason for some to pack up their things and follow. Whichever of these people's reasons fall under, I do believe it's totally plausible. Climate change. Yeah, Nostradamus did talk about climate change hundreds of years ago, and his words were pretty clear. The passage read, 
Like the sun, the head shall sear the shining sea. The Black Sea's living fish shall all but boil. When Rhodes and Genoa half-starved shall be, the local folk to cut them up shall toil. Don't be so literal, though. I doubt we're all walking hotspots for the sharks for summer, nor will we suddenly fish some cooked food. That being said, he still has a very valid point when we take all environmental news together. Let's take the most obvious example. How many of you notice they're sweating a lot more than usual, even on a typical day? How many thinks it's as hot as burning coal when you go out for some fresh air? I mean, some of us might have tried to see if we can cook eggs on a sidewalk at this point. In Arizona, that's pretty normal. Sure, it doesn't seem like much, but it is one of the most felt changes with our climate today. And hey, if you want something more visibly obvious, check the news or even YouTube. Glaciers are shrinking, hurricanes or heat waves are more intense, and heck, the flowers and plants are flowering sooner than expected. I know, I know, some of you will say it's a natural process that the world will make anyway, whether it be now or centuries later. But let me ask you, would you be ready to face this threat sooner than later? Would you be willing to sit there, feel like your brain is boiling, while scientists figure out how we put a plug on that giant hole we burned through the ozone? If you're thinking long and hard about it, then probably not. Regardless, this prediction certainly started proving itself. Now it's time for the day's best pick. What other thing could Nostradamus have foretold? Alien invasion? Wait, no, that's Baba Vanga, but it is a takeover. AI takeover. Nostradamus certainly is the man of the hour, with us talking about him a lot in this video, but listen. One of the things he predicted is the AI invasion. Pretty neat for a guy who lived in a time when no electronics were ever invented yet, huh? Interested? Well, he said this. The moon in the full night over the high mountain. The new sage with a lone brain sees it. By his disciples invited to be immortal. Eyes of the south, hands and bosoms, bodies in the fire. Pretty cryptic, to be fair. Most of his stuff is, really. Save for some entries on this list, but those parts about immortal disciples and bodies on fire, yeah, some people believe he's talking about artificial intelligence. Granted, let's not get ahead of ourselves. The writer certainly believes that he doesn't necessarily mean man-hating robots will start massacring us this year. Heck, maybe that was supposed to be Y2K. Maybe in a few decades, though. I mean, heck, Elon Musk seems pretty dead set on robotics right now. Okay, I'm mostly joking, but honestly, what I believe he refers to would be what we have right now. How many of us use Siri to get answers to some of our most pressing questions? These include, who'd be the halftime show in the Super Bowl? How many others command Alexa to turn off their lights? Heck, guys, there's even water bottles now that remind us that we need to hydrate, for God's sakes. Think about it this way, though. Technology right now is already a big part of our lives. So big, actually, that I think it'll be so weird to think of life without it. Would you consider this a takeover? Eh, given that I keep seeing stuff on my Amazon list that I didn't put on there in the first place, I believe it. Solar Storm. Riddle me this. In one of Nostradamus' prophecies, he wrote, I see from the sky which encompasses them. Sun and Mars conjoined in Leo, then at Marmande. Lightning, great hail, a wall falls into Garonne. If you're as confused as I am, high five, brother. But apparently, according to people who took time to understand his message, Nostradamus was writing about a powerful solar storm that would hit the Earth. While a solar flare couldn't directly harm us, it could cause some catastrophic problems. When a coronal mass ejection, or CME for short, hits the atmosphere, it'll cause a disturbance in the planet's magnetic field. This would cause a geomagnetic storm. This can disrupt our satellites in orbit, which could fall and mess with telecommunications and navigation systems. That's not all, though. It could potentially affect power grids, leading to a global blackout. No bueno for those of us scared of the dark. If it's just the dark we'd have to be scared of, it wouldn't be so bad, right? Well, if you don't have cold, hard cash in your house, your money would be stuck within the banking system. You wouldn't really be able to buy supplies. Technologies needed to keep some hospital patients alive would also malfunction, leading to numerous deaths. Internet would be gone, making us lose touch with faraway loved ones, and refrigerators wouldn't be able to work. Ah, oh, God, we lose out on all that food. I wouldn't worry as much, though. With NASA putting the sun under surveillance basically 24-7, they should be able to tell if a big one is coming and then warn governments. And then, hopefully, if our government is feeling merciful, they'll give us enough time to actually warn us and help us prepare. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So, here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Cloning. 
Last but not least, Baba Vanga foresaw that by 2046, doctors and scientists would have cured any disease known to man via cloning, and yes, you read that whole statement right. Let's get the elephant out of the room first. While Baba Vanga did specify 2046, medical technology right now isn't that far off from making this step more plausible by this year. We'll get more into that in a bit. Second off though, what she meant by cloning likely isn't just creating another human. Instead, she probably meant that doctors would be able to craft living, working body organs. Yeah, I think she meant cellular cloning than some complicated human harvesting situation. So with those points clarified, I meant earlier that there is a form of medical cloning going on as we speak. If you have a bit more knowledge about this in the chat, correct me if I'm wrong, but therapeutic cloning is essentially creating a cloned embryo to produce embryonic stem cells with the same DNA as the original donor cell. Some of you may be wondering, what's so special about that? The thing about stem cells is that they can generate all the types of cells in a living body. Yeah, it's basically kind of like microscopic Superman. With enough time and research, our medical professionals can potentially use this method to create healthy organs and tissues. They can also use this to ethically test new drugs and just figure out the molecular causes of disease. Sounds great, so why not just put it into practice? There's at least enough knowledge to make this workable, right? Well, at the moment, it's kind of risky to be doing that right now. There are striking similarities between stem cells and cancer cells, with both being able to proliferate indefinitely. Done wrong, you're looking at having a terminal illness. So while this would certainly be a medical breakthrough, let's settle down and wait for the experts to tackle this research one step at a time. See you all next time!